Hepatitis C really is a virus, and viruses are tiny, very tiny. In fact, they're not even alive. They're like a piece of DNA with a little bit of protection surrounding it. Other examples of viruses would be like the HIV virus, the rhinovirus, which causes the common cold, and of course, the flu virus. Now, they, all viruses can reproduce on their own. They need to like infect a host, just like hepatitis C. In fact, hepatitis C is very good at reproducing. It's been estimated that in the medical community, one person in one day infected, about a trillion replications of this virus can be taking place. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Now, the term hepatitis in the medical community really refers to inflammation of the liver. Now, inflammation is sort of like when the body tries to heal itself but ends up doing more damage. The good news is the only way a person can get infected is with blood-to-blood -blood contact, so it's not easy to become infected. It's just like the HIV virus, in a way. Now, when the virus enters the bloodstream, it makes its way to the liver. Now, the liver is about the size of a football, and its whole job is to purify the blood, just like an oil filter in a, in a car. So all the blood goes there. So when the virus is in the liver, it starts to grow and expand. That's what it does. And now the immune system senses this danger, sends in like all this army to kind of fight it off. And that's when the inflammation occurs. Now over time, this inflammation causes scarring, and that's called cirrhosis. Now eventually, liver cells start to die off. Okay? And they form scar tissue that actually clog up these arteries, these pathways of blood. And we all know that's not good. That's when like heart disease occurs and stuff like that. Now, for instance, one of the signs and symptoms of this disease is anything, if anything bad happens in your body, what do you think the first sign is going to be? Probably a little bit of pain, right? It's an indicator. So if you see uh, any pain where your liver is located, which is like an upper section of your stomach region, it could be an indicator of this illness. Now, like I mentioned, the liver gets inflamed and it gets all bigger in size. So if you kind of notice that the upper part of your stomach is kind of getting bigger, I mean, maybe it's not food, I don't know, you might be able to notice it, it could be an indicator too. Now, other symptoms really have to do with the, the liver failing at its job to purify the blood. Now, remember, blood carries oxygen to all these organs that need it. Very important. It's like, the, it's like life. So initial symptoms, which you might notice, would be like weakness and fatigue, um, loss of appetite and weight loss. Impurities in the blood could also lead to dark colored urine, pale or bloody looking stool as well. In fact, interesting enough, just looking down at your stools in general can, can give you a lot of information on your health. Now if there's a lot of toxins and bile in the bloodstream, it could turn the skin, the whites of your eyes, and nails like a yellowish color. This type of condition is known as jaundice, and it actually frequently occurs with people that have hepatitis C. Now, when things get really bad in the liver, the symptoms worsen. And one of the main functions of the liver is, is its blood, blood clotting ability as well, which stops bleeding. Since this is not working properly, a person could bruise very easily and bleed very easily and continue to bleed. Also, blood vessels can break apart more easily if their liver is not working. And uh, this can lead to sort of like a, a spidery appearance on the top of the skin because the blood vessels are bursting and blood's kind of getting all over the place. So that could be another sign. Also, itching can result because of uh, deposits of bile salt right underneath the skin because the liver is not working. Muscle loss can take place because the liver is not providing good nutrients. Next, the brain can get ammonia, which is supposed to be filtered out by this organ, but again, it's not working, and it can lead to confusion, all types of mental problems, even a coma if left untreated. And the best defense against this ailment will be not to get in the first place because it's only blood-to-blood -blood contact. 
Next up, the immune system can actually fight off the disease. Even though it grows rapidly, we can, we can fight it off. We can do it. But according to Stanford University, right now only around 20% of the people that get infected have a strong enough immune system to fight it off. Now, if this, if this disease gets too entrenched in the liver and grows too much, the only way to get rid of it would be a liver transplant, unfortunately. Now, of course, you can build up your immune system so you can fight it off. And it, build up your immune system in general is just great. Now, to do that, of course, you have to probably have to eat a good diet, get enough rest, not get stressed out. Oh get up exercise, uh, but there's also a lot of herbal remedies and supplements out there that can really boost your immune system out. Now, I can't really go over all these herbs with you right now, um, but I will point you in a good direction. Um, I've actually written a guide all about the process of going out there and buying dietary supplements. It goes over various herbal remedies to consider. It goes over how to spot a bad brand from a good brand because there's a lot of crappy brands out there. A lot of these government agencies like the FDA in the United States, they don't regulate supplements very good. It goes over that. It goes over a whole bunch of interesting information all about supplements. The best part is it's completely free. So you can learn a lot, you can learn a lot of stuff in just a couple minutes of your time. To check out that free guide, all you gotta do is simply click on the link below this video. I hope I helped you out somewhat. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Enjoy the rest of your day.